Welcome to Politics and Right. My name is Egberto Willis, your host. Thank you so kind for being part of the show. Good morning, Houston. How are my favorite people doing? Good morning, Houston. Good morning, Harris County. Good morning, Texas. Good morning, the United States of America. And of course, good morning to the world. How are my peeps doing? I know we are going to be doing fine because you know what? We are going to make sure that we are doing fine, my dear folks. Anyway, uh, back in the control room, El Senor Howard Reynolds and Jack Van Bibber. How are my two very, very smart people doing this morning? Well, I think we could really be called alchemists. Oh, oh, <laughs> explain, because we're, please. We are, explain. we are mixing up another. We are mixing up another fine show today. In our in our vats, so they're boiling over here. They're boiling, and it's sounding good. It's been great. <laughs> anyway, how I, you know, I kind of missed you yesterday. You know, I, I normally have. We always get our Howard fix, but somehow the Howard fix was missing yesterday. I was off making some money. Oh, I had I another it. assignment to do. Well, you know what, man? What can I say? We can't argue about that. How's Jack doing, El Senor Van Beber? Well, he's right here. Let's find out. Good morning, Egberto. How are you? Good, good morning, Jack. How are how my, my buddy doing this morning? I, I'm doing good. I really don't have any words of wisdom today, but I do have a wish for the people. Okay. You know, when you're, there, when you're out there dealing with these people, have some patience, have some tolerance, try to put yourself in those shoe, their shoes, and uh, don't react. Important words. And you know why it's important? Because, you know, you, you notice something. Let me tell you, um, we are always fast to the give ourselves a hard time. Last night, just before, when I got through writing the newsletter, I started doing a couple of TikToks on, uh, on uh, a clip that I did with unions. And for the most part, it got positive reviews, but uh, actually largely positive reviews. Uh, but there are a couple of people inside of the YouTube, or not, the, the clips, right? Uh, the, these little shorts under a minute uh, that came out and said things like F unions and that sort of thing. And I'm sitting down there saying, imagine uh, somebody can be in such a mode that they, the, the first inkling is that I'm going to say something negative about something that's going to help me, right? Or somebody that's working for me. Then the other comment was asking for 40% is too much. And then you think about it, right? You've lost over 40% over the last, I don't know, uh, several years that there was no, there was, there were no gains for employees. So now it turns out to be 40% really that, that you need to, to keep you on par. And what happens? People complain and say, ah, oh, you guys are asking for too much. Uh, you know, you sit down there and wonder, come on, people, don't let others play with your mind, play against your interests. Anyway, Melanie Keelan is in this in the house on the chat with us from Barcelona, Spain. Thank you for being here, Melanie. Always great to have you in the in in the house with us but anyway today's subject is titled uh a warning from two conservatives a republican defense biden's ag merrick garland and more and the reality is i am going to start with the on more but before we really really get into it i want to tell folks please remember that this is a call-in show but most importantly, this is your show. Not only is this your show, but you have the option to change the topic at any time. Because the one thing I like to make sure folks understand is, look, we are here to serve you. And as the ones here to serve you, we know that there are times, sometimes there are topics that come up that um, we didn't think about. And you say, hey, you know what? We need to hear about this right away. So again. We are here to serve. That's not cliche. Anybody who's been a longtime listener of the show knows that we make sure uh, know that we make sure to fulfill that promise. Anyway, there are many ways to get to the program, folks. Please remember you get it at the dial at 90.1 FM, 
90.1 FM on the dial. If you're in the Houston metropolitan area, if you uh, download the tune in application from the Android store or the Apple store, I think it's called the Play Store, you can download the tune in application and go to KPFT uh, or search for KPFT and start streaming us in on that application. Alternatively, you can go to kpft.org, kpft.org, click on that listen button and listen to our program. If you're there and you have a little bit of ducats in your pocket, you can also go ahead and click donate, support the program in the name or support the station in the name of this program, Politics Done Right. Make sure that our fund drives are shorter. You can also go to see us. And I am with my Rock Shock t-shirt on oh, that t-shirt rock shot uh sports uh cycling shirt on because you know i immediately go and spin after the show so facebook.com slash kpft houston you can watch the show there or you can watch it on youtube by going to politics done right tv remember all the clips and 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 so forth can be uh listened to at our politics done right.com slash podcast politics and right.com slash podcast and of course if you need to email me and say egberto we want you to cover this or egberto we want to cover that or egberto we hate your guts or we love you or whatever you want to say just go to kpft at politics done right.com as well as uh you can if you want if we don't complete the show meaning if you guys change the subject on me you can go to politicsdoneright.com slash newsletter with all the links to the program etc 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 eric hayes is in the house eric hayes is in the house thank you so kindly for being here anyway like i said i i don't want to start with the videos today i want to start with something that uh economist former uh clinton labor secretary a guy that's always a populist for the common man. Uh, interviewed him a couple of times, once with uh, Move to Amend on our Move to Amend report show, as well as I interviewed him uh, with uh, while I was uh, doing the show at Coffee Party USA. This guy, I, again, this article here really touched me. I want to go ahead and expand on it. Um, he, he titled it, Biden on the picket line is good but he must go further. It's essential the president and other Democratic lawmakers stand unambiguously on the side of working people, but even a picket line visit is not enough. And uh, some of the things here we're going to cover, you guys know because we've covered before. Uh, kudos uh, for joining the UAW picket line tomorrow. You're the first president to ever join a picket line, but please don't stop there. Go on to criticize the CEOs of America's big corporations who are now raking in more than 350, 350 times what the average American worker is earning. In the 1950s, they took in 20 times. What has happened to our system? Blast corporations that are monopolizing their industries. Condemn firms that are using their profits to buy back shares of stock polluting the planet with carbon emissions and polluting our democracy with big money. You won't be the first Democratic president to do this. In other words, yeah, this is the first president that's going to be on the picket line. But remember a guy whose uh, name is Franklin D. Roosevelt. He continues, he says, on the eve of the 1936 election, President Franklin D. Roosevelt warned America that business and financial monopolies and war profiteers considered the U.S. government as a mere, quote, as a mere appendage to their affairs. We know now that government by organized money is just as dangerous as government by organized mob. Never before in all our history have these forces been so united against one candidate as they stand today. They are unanimous in their hate for me, and I welcome their hatred. That's what Roosevelt said. And it's important to note something here. Um, you know, I mean, a lot of people are talking about the cartel and what they're doing by sending drugs overseas uh, from, to, to, from China or from Mexico into America. And, you know, all this stuff they talk about as they want to attack immigration. And, and these are all 
look, uh, drugs are coming over. Fentanyl is a problem here in the United States, and a lot of people are are killing themselves with it. But it's not really the core of the problem. Um, I'm going to divest from his article here and talk about personal responsibility, societal responsibility, etc. If we take, a, if we remember, if we remember, Americans uh, gravitate towards drugs whenever, whenever there are intrinsic problems. Um, th- the despair that many feel is covered by alcohol, is covered by drugs, is covered by the next high. Eric, I understand you think this is justification for murder. It is not. Uh, the difference between, look, uh, if you want, if you want, if you want to consider those who are bringing in fentanyl murderers, uh, you should also consider those who manufacture guns murderers, the ones who allow laissez faire gun policies. That should also be considered murder under that scenario. But again, remember, profiteers uh, are the ones making from money. I mean, making money from these drugs, the ones making money from guns, the ones making money from war. All these people under that tenet could be considered murderers. I mean, it should easily be considered murders. All right, continuing with the, the, the message from Robert Rourke. Love the guy. He said, America is again in a populist age. And by the way, folks, remember, you have the option to call in at any time to talk on this issue or any other issue. The number is 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713-526-5738. Please don't wait till the end of the program to call because, again, I'd like to spend that time or give you that time to say what you want to say. 713-526-5738. Do not hesitate to call in as soon as you have an issue. Hit the uh, hit number two to get on in. Hit number two to come on in. Uh, so again, you dial 713-526-5738. Hit the number two to come on in, and we'll get you on air right away. Anyway, the biggest challenge, the biggest change over the last three decades. Uh, well, let me let me go one paragraph before that. America is, uh, again, in a populist age. When a vast army of Americans have shafted, uh, have been shafted by big corporations, Wall Street and the moneyed interests. The biggest change over the last three decades, a change lurking behind the insecurities and resentments of the working middle class, has nothing to do with identity politics, wokeism, immigration, critical race theory, transgender kids, or any other current Republican boogeyman. That's not it. It has directly to do with a huge upward swing shift in the distribution of income, and wealth. Although total wealth is much greater now than it was four decades ago, and the distribution of that wealth is far more unequal, the bottom 50% hasn't budged. Wealth at the top has exploded. Uh, Steve yesterday was right, according to Hayes. I guess he was talking to my critique of capitalism yesterday. And uh, uh, I don't. I think. Remember, Steve plays devil advocate when he's on the program quite often. I don't think we're in any disagreement with what is occurring. And like I said several times, the best the best way to know if the current op- operation of a, a an economic system works is by the results attained, and the results that have been attained since we made the drastic shift. In 1980, with Reaganomics, also known as supply-side economics, also known as voodoo economics, as named by Senor Bush, Bush number one, Herbert Walker Bush, if that system has produced what we have today, which means the transfer of everybody else's monies to the very top, that is evidence enough of something that isn't working. You know, we can talk hypotheticals as much as we want to talk about hypotheticals. But if the cur- if what the current economic system has done is to move 
money from the many to the few, it says that economic system has failed. We have now the evidence that proves it has failed. And the moneyed interests are the ones who have invested or have the monies to invest to do what they have done to the minds of many and to continue into supporting policies that hurt them, Eric. The reason you are so consumed with the narrative from the wealthy guys in as much as you are not wealthy is because you have been convinced your mind has been enchained or chained with the story from the guy who is continuing to take what's yours. You know, I, I don't even have to prove my case. The case has already been proven. All right. Although total wealth is much greater now than it was four decades ago, I repeat, total wealth is much greater than it was before. Right? Uh, still, still, the workers are getting a very small share. And no, it's not Uncle Sam who's taking that money. It is the top. 1%, the top 10%. And the fact that you are on a chat in with Politics Done Right, Brother Hayes, saying that Uncle Sam is taking all this money proves that they have been successful in lying to you and you have accepted it. Just look at the numbers, sir. Just do the math. That's all you got to do. Anyway, 713-526-5738. Please don't wait till the end of the program to call because again, the only way we make a difference is if we make a difference. All right. Meanwhile, a declining share of the nation wealth has been going to workers and an exploded, exponentially rising share to CEOs and big investors. That isn't by chance. That is the economic system that we have. The economic system says if, if you are somebody that makes your money on capital, and if capital is taxed at a lower rate than uh, your other, a lower rate than the regular worker's income, then you are going to consistently make not only more money than the person making a wage, but exponentially more money. Because again, that's how math works. It's a math problem. And it's a math of the current economic system. Every economic system is governed by some formula. And we have a formula that governs our economic system. And it's playing out just as we say. You know, they don't want you to think about the math. They just want you to make nonsensical statements like my brother here online, where he says, we're giving it to Ukraine. We've given a total of under just, uh, let's say, $100 billion to Ukraine out of an economy of over $13 trillion. And you're making a comment about Ukraine is the problem. Again, math. Math is what it takes. Math. Numeros. And one of the reasons why the folks on the right, as well as neoliberal Democrats, don't want specific critical thinking and are you learning how to critically think is because critical thinkers are not going to take what i say at face value critical thinkers are not going to take what the right wing says at face value critical thinking is going to say i am going to listen to what egberto says i am going to listen to what other people say and i am then going to do the math I am going to do the critical thinking. I'm going to do the logic and determine if they're making sense. And after that, I will decide if I can put my trust in these different people that inform me. I wish everybody would do that. Ask the questions. Go ahead and ask the questions. Analyze and decide who best to trust. That is how it's done. 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713-526-5738. Meanwhile, a declining share of the nation's wealth has been going to workers and an exponentially rising share to CEOs and big investors. This change didn't happen because of so-called neutral market forces. It happened because of policy decisions made over the last four decades, for example. 
And now, listen up, Eric. This one is for you. If you want to understand what happened, learn what happened. This is what we did to open up the American economy wide to imports from China, to deregulate Wall Street and allow it to make bets with other people's money, not with your money, with other people's money, to dramatically cut taxes on big corporations and the rich, to let corporations bash unions and fire workers who try to organize. These are all the things that that created this problem to encourage activists, investors and private equity companies to take over underperforming companies and then promptly fire workers and sell off assets to allow big corporations to become far larger, monopolizing entire industries. We can go on and on and on and on to allow pharmaceutical companies to extend their patents and jack up the prices of critical drugs. In my book, as I see it, class warfare, the only resort to right-wing doom. And notice what I gave as a subtitle, the only resort to right-wing doom. I explained all these concepts from, from patents, etc., and how it's done. All right, Lynette. Come on the air, Lynette. How are you doing this morning, my friend? Come on in. I'm doing. I'm doing good. I have to make this really quick. Um, yes. I know it's going to start something, but remember the old adage: "Give a man a fish, he eats for a day. Teach a man a fish, he eats for life." Right? Yes, ma'am. Where somewhere I read, "Give a man a fish, you take away your business opportunity." So ultimately, nobody wants to teach anything because if they did, they would put financial education in the school systems which is on the books unlocked, but it's not mandated, so it doesn't have to be taught. And the other thing also is that if the system wanted us to save, they would promote saving versus consumerism, and everybody wouldn't be in debt. So all I need is to say thank you for listening. You all have a great day. I love your job. Thank you very much, Lynette. Thank you for calling. And th- no better words could have said other than Lynette. And th- the first part, notice Lynette started with education. Yes, it's there, but they don't want you to learn too much because if you learn too much, you're going to learn, hey, I can be in business. Let me give, a, let me give an example of, of, um, uh, of, of what we have here, because when, whenever I talk about the flaws in capitalism, and, and by the way, I don't know if you heard the end of the show yesterday when there was a caller who called. I mean, the end of Steve uh, Steve uh, Hunter shows yesterday when there was a caller who said we need a blend of things to encourage to encourage people to go out there and get things done at the same time that we have protections. And I agreed with him wholeheartedly. But uh, but the pilot, what he talks about, he, his answer was we need some capitalism and we need some socialism. When you fuse the two, the, the best of these systems together, it is no longer, you, you don't call it a fusion of capitalism and socialism. You call it a, a, a completely different economic model. And that economic model, it's best to name it, not a fraction of capitalism and a fraction of socialism or anything like that. It's best to call it what it is, free enterprise with a strong safety net social safety net it's not capitalism once you remo- once you control once you put controls to protect people it's no no longer capitalism and that is usually what i try to tell folks what we want is a great free enterprise system with controls uh, a, a social safety net where everybody can strive and those people who want to just go out there and excel There's nothing stopping them from doing it. But at the same time, the humanity in what we believe in should, of course, uh, be correct. So, I mean, that is, I mean, I love what Lynette had to say. Education. If we're educated, we won't. Again, let's let's think about uh, the, 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 the super capitalist, that person who says, I am going to go out there and use your labor, profit more from your labor than you do. An educated person thinks about that and say, why is it I am going to allow all of my intellect, all of the labor that I can provide to actually be profited by a Bill Gates? I use Bill Gates because he's generally a nice guy, the Koch brothers. Why is it that I allow my labor, others to profit immensely from my labor while I struggle? 
An educated person doesn't do that. An educated person tries to solve that problem and says, we need to have an economic system that rewards me for what I do. Good morning, uh, Paul Fleming from Atlanta. We are represented from all over. Thank you so kindly for being here. And that is what's important. An educated person, not an enslaved mind. An educated person. Let's go to Ray. Come on in, Ray. Buenos dias, Egberto. Como estas, mi hermano? Buenos dias, buenos dias. Talk to me, my brother, Ray. Yes, uh, you know, I, I just woke up and uh, tuned in to you here talking about this uh, economy and this uh, system here. I love how you break it down and say, you know what? If people would just take the time to just stop villainizing, you know, and yes. have a decent society. If but but I want to I want to like humor you with a quote that I thought about, you know, I'm not Jack, but, but uh this quote was from the the late wrestler Roddy Piper and Roddy Piper said, "Just when you think you know the answer, I change the question." I and in this yay. When it comes to the greedy capitalists, the question is how little can we let these people live off of while we funnel all the money to the top? And for I remember for a few years, because I was a Bernie Sanders supporter, you know, he said we need a $15 minimum wage. But all these companies raised their, when they finally raised their wage, like my company finally raised their wage to the $15, you know, minimum threshold. But because of the economy and inflation, that $16 an hour does not carry as far as it did when it was highly requested, maybe in 2016, 2017. So that's why I say it's like when a person thinks we know what the cost of living, what is a comfortable cost of living in this economy, it always jumps up. Like I say, you thought you know the answer. I thought I thought the answer to a living wage was fifteen dollars an hour, but then the, the greedy capitalists want to raise the cost of everything. So now they change the question: What is a, a comfortable cost of living? And they do that over and over again. So we never get ahead. We're always trying to play catch up. Ray, you but nailed the time. Let, no, but don't go if you if you have the time to stay on because I want to no, talk to you on this. No, I'm uh, here. This, this is very important, what you just said. It used to be $15 an hour. We've gone past that. Let's, let's, let's say, talk about something. You hear the economists, uh, the, the, the bad economists on TV all the time complaining about uh, the hourly wage and what wages are going to do to inflation, etc. It's a lie. First of all, for the, let's look at the auto workers that are asking for 40%. Uh, first of all, wages as a percentage of that, the car price that you're buying is about 5%. Wages, it's about 5% of the, the price of your car. Minimal, right? Uh, given the 40% raise that these people deserve and earned, it's not a burden. It sounds like a lot simply because they have been neglected for so long. What you said, however, raise a propos. Uh, very important. At the time, when Bernie was running in 2016, 2015, he started $15 an hour or so. It's something like, oh, yeah, that would be good. We are seven years past that. Seven years past that with, an inf uh, uh, with, with inflation a bit anywhere between 2% and 9% over that period. So that has gone up by a bunch as far as what the minimum wage is. In fact, our good friend Paul Fleming on the chat says, $22 an hour is what that $15 an hour was then. It's what we need now, $22 an hour, that living wage for a, a small family to work and the two, two mother and father working. That's what's needed right now. But the answer was never $15 an hour. It was $15 an hour for now. It should be $15 an hour for now indexed by inflation. That is what we need to be talking about right now, because you know who is indexed by inflation? The CEOs. Here is a kicker. Let's go to the UAW again. The UAW are saying the following. 
I'm not the UAW. The, the corporations are telling the UAW the following. We don't want to pay you what you're worth right now because we need to save money off for the electric cars, the development for the electric cars. We have neglected over that time that we have underpaid you. We have continued to pay the stockholders a great return. We've continued to give CEOs a raises. In fact, we have given CEOs raises of over 40% over that time that we've asked you to stay still, right? That's what we've done. What's good for them? It's not good for you is what they're telling you. And they're telling you that their mismanagement of not necessarily investing in electric cars or, or, or the next car technology you must be again. They're asking you again to pay the burden of them skimming all of this for the executives and the, the shareholders. No, the shareholder is a shareholder to take a risk to make passive income. You are a worker that put your limb, your mind at risk when you work for a company. And as such, you are the major stakeholder in that corporation. Your body, your humanity is the major stakeholder in that corporation. And when we have others that think otherwise, that is what our system have taught us to do. Think so little of ourselves, always looking out for the rich guy as if the rich guy is inherently more deserving than we are when we are the ones who actually get the work done. We are the ones who actually invent. We are the ones who actually get these things. And that is what I try to promote to everybody. So Ray, you nailed it. Paul Fleming, you nailed it. Uh, and uh, so please, that's why I love the critical thinkers. I, I want everybody to call in. I want everybody to talk. But the critical thinkers are important. Thank you, Ray, for bringing that up. Yeah, one last thing, you know, I mean, with that being said, they got to stop telling us, we gave you what you want now, what do you want now? Because that's yeah. what they do. They give yes. us what we want, and then when we give us what we want, it's not enough, so we ask for more, and they want to make us look like we're the greedy ones. Thank you. I digress. You nailed it. They make it look like we're the greedy one. Uh, you know, Eric just tells me, Egberto, you are too worried about the rich. Of course I'm worried about the rich. I'm worried about the rich because the rich got rich by taking what's mine. The rich got rich by taking what's exactly. Ray's. The rich got rich by taking what's Howard's, what's, what's Van Bebber's. That's why I worry about the rich, because it is money they didn't earn, Senor Hayes. That's the issue. Thank you, Ray. Let's go to Mike. All right, bro. Hello. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Mike, come on in. Yes, sir. Um, I was just listening to you guys talking about the minimum wage. Yes, sir. Hello? Okay. Yes, you're here. Yeah. Um, the uh, oh, 22 an hour to me is, is not, I, I guess a lot of it depends on where you live at. I, I yes. mean, you know, I'm from Houston, of course, but, you know, the, 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 I, I pay for health insurance. You know, if you're paying for health insurance, the, you know, the, the problem that a lot of us have is you you don't make a lot of money, but you make too much to qualify for anything. Yes. And what I mean by that is, is I paid four hundred dollars. My insurance, my health insurance, just went up eighty seven dollars a month. Yes. And I've actually used. I've had a blood test, one blood test, and one X ray done in the last seventeen months. Yes. And they said after reviewing my policy that I need to pay them $87 more a month. Well, now that math doesn't add up. But that's not what I call about. What I, what I want to talk about is when you figure in the, the, the price, uh, the cost of living, you know, utilities uh, are paying for, and you're paying for a vehicle uh, and, and so forth, you know, 22 an hour in Texas actually kind of puts you in a bad spot in a way. Yes. That, that, uh, you know, I know uh, it, I'm 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 58 years old. I've got grandkids, but if if I were uh, uh, still a parent, I would say in my early late 20s, early 30s, and I had kids and trying to make it on 22 dollars an hour, that that would be impossible in Texas, near impossible. And that's if you're providing health care and so forth. Because so many companies out here. The company I work for, their health care 
that they they offer is so pitiful that you just have to. It's cheaper to get outside insurance. Yeah. So now twenty an hour. I mean, really, it's not. That's especially for people with children. I've got a nephew. He's a single dad. He he pays four hundred a week in uh, child daycare. So, yeah. but he makes too much for any assistance. But he doesn't make enough to afford all that. You follow me? Of course, I follow you. And that, uh, look, Mike, that is what we are fighting for. And that, look, you know, the 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 problem that you're talking about, right, is a problem that afflict afflicts everybody. Not, I shouldn't say the problem that afflicts. It's the problems that afflict most middle class Americans. We suffer in silence. And what we're trying to do at Politics Done Right and other places is to tell folks, no, we have to rise up. The reason we are in this condition is because Eric says, I worry about the rich. Yes, I worry about the rich because the because of the rich is the reason why people are living in the conditions they are because they are taking it all right there. The economic and, system as oh, it is, they're taking it all. And what I'm saying is we can change that. Let's let's give an example. I don't mind an employer paying $22 an hour if what you are saying is mitigated. Remember, what the social policies I believe in is, is uh, health care, meaning universal health care, uh, also child care. Yeah. Child care, that's a very – we want a, a healthy economy and a, a vibrant workforce. Give people health care. Give people child care, just like we have people go to school every day and the state pays for it. You know, everybody gets their high school paid for, their elementary school paid for. Why aren't they getting their daycare paid for? Right. That will give everybody a level playing field. Why was it giving them a level playing field? Because now you determine what work you want to do. You can go out there and be a part of a vibrant economy. If you want to form your own company, you can as well. The problem is that they have uh, they have allowed a, a, a certain group of our people to be enslaved mentally into thinking that entitlements for these things are a bad thing for society, which it's not. Giving everybody health care, giving everybody child care, giving everybody education care, etc., means that you create a vibrant economy. If you doubt it, go to the countries that do it. We have examples. Sure. No, absolutely. No, absolutely. I, I'm, I have researched that, and I've seen uh, other countries in Scandinavia that, that do do that. Yes. And, and, and uh, yeah, I mean, it, it just makes sense. You I, know? And you it know what? To you do that. You still have people who have a lot of money because there are some of us who are willing to work 16 hour days. There are some of us who just love working all of the time. You will ha still have the purse. But what we'll get now is the people who have the most cash or the people who want to work as much for that cash. But right now, the people in America who have the most cash are the people who best know how to get you to work for them. When it, you know, a phrase that a lot of people like to use that I hate is the following. I let my money work for me. Do I put money in the bank and get some interest on it? Yes. But there, you know, that's a good thing. But when those have we these classical investors that say, I let my money work for me, it's a lie because what it really means is I am work, I'm profiting off of the back of somebody else's labor. Don't let anybody sure, tell, sure. tell you otherwise. And, and, I, and, and I listen to you a lot, and I have for quite a while. And I've called you several other times. And, and, and I, I've never heard anything from you I didn't agree with. And, and, like, and uh, you know, it's just, I, I'm only 58, but, but I can remember 40 years ago when uh, things weren't magnificent for blue-collar people, which is what I am. They, But they were... I, I I could pay my bills and I still had some money to put in the bank. It wasn't a Absolutely. whole lot, but I had some money that I could put in there. And and my and the and the, and the gap between the wages and the cost of living was not near as far apart as it is now. I mean, I'm at 58. I lived better at I lived better at 23 years old than I do at 58. It's amazing. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it my, that it, it, it's a shame, but you know what? What we have to do 
is uh, not, I, I don't believe in despair. I'm always positive. I think we can do something about it. But the only way you do something about it is enough of us are educated on the real issues. As we get educated on the real issues, we start making the right choices for government. Uh, we have some, a, a couple of person, uh, one person specifically in the chat that they are pretty much, you know what, you, you know, the, the, the weight that sometimes slow down progress, but as you lessen that weight, you get more progress. So my goal is all of us together, enlightening ourselves and eventually putting the right people in office that will prevent the pilfer from occurring. Mike, I thank you so kindly for coming or for calling. Please keep listening, telling folks about the program and let's then go to Melissa. Thank you, my brother. Melissa, come on in. Good morning, Houston. Good morning, morning, Alberto. Good, Good morning. morning. How are you doing, my friend? I am well. I uh, was. I'm not excited because you know it's it's um, realities that's coming to to everyone, right? But mm -hmm. um, I got tickled when uh, he said uh, when the, your last caller said um, we uh, your his friend, you know, uh, makes uh, enough, but he doesn't. He he, he doesn't make enough to qualify. And mm -hmm. so remember the conversation we were having in, in uh in the past. I was said I was said to myself, did his friend is his friend trying to become a welfare king? Not the welfare. <laughs> you remember <laughs> that, right. I, I it is funny because yes. that is not the case at all. We're just trying to survive, you know. <laughs> but that is how they frame it. So, they they want to frame it that way, right? Exactly. Man, years, years, years of trying to prove this point has now hit blue collar America. So yeah. welcome to urban life, uh, yeah. Houston. You know, it, 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 yeah, <laughs> it, M Melissa, it's important. You know, I, I, let me tell you something. I don't don't leave yet. I want to say something. Right. Because I said this for a long time. Right. We are all in the same boat. It just took some of us a bit longer to realize that, right? And uh, um, I, I have a phrase, I don't know how long you've been listening to Politics Done Right, but I've always said, whenever we unite the ghettos, the barrios, and Appalachia, right? We will win the battle. And it's, it's a stereotypical thing to say, because what I mean is when black folk, Latino and others, and white folks realize that we are all in this oh, boat together, Together, oh, we are one. Us all. Right. Everybody get we just need to realize that. Man. Right. And, you know, that's what I preach. That's why I preach love. That's why if you take a look at the books that I write, I have one called It's Worth It, How to Talk to Your Right-Wing Relative Friends and Neighbors. Because the MAGA folks are not my enemies. I love the MAGA folks. They're just misled. They're misled. So I, how can I, if you had a sick angry, brother and sister, right? They're all angry. They, Right. Yeah. Melissa, let me ask you this, Melissa. If you had a brother or a sister or a family member that is really, really sick and because of their illness, they slap you and because of their illness, they tell you things that hurt your feeling. Do you really hold it against yeah. them? You, what you try to do is you try to people get them people. right. Work with them. That's what we got to do. Thank you, my sister. You have a great yeah. day. Thank you. And let's let's go to Peter. Come on in, Peter. Good morning, Egberto. Happy Good Tuesday. Morning. Good morning and happy Tuesday, Professor Peter. A teacher is oh, calling in. Right. And I love teachers because teachers move knowledge forward. And they spend, many times, they spend more time with our kids than we do. Talk to me, Peter, uh, before I go to oh. Donald. That's right. Well, that's a quick point I wanted to make here about our wonderful President Biden, how he will be on the picket lines today. And I'm so proud of him because he's setting a precedence to basically get, get this impasse. Like we're at the United Auto Workers are at an impasse. So I hope he just at least gets a voice out there like for the people. And that's like a mold. So he's setting a precedence, an example, like modeling how to, you know, stop these, um, stop what's happening right now, like, get, you know, get a, get a good, a fair deal for the workers. So much like, um, how our, say our senators our representatives up in Congress, which I'm attempting to do to, to make my way up there to Congress, you know, to be a voice for the people to, so that's what I'm attempting to do. I just wanted to just give a shout out to president Biden and, you know, just thank him for his leadership. And like, he's setting a good um, example for me as I'm trying to do the same to get up there and, you know, you know break up stalemates and different things that are happening in our country. And, 
And I just wanted to hear your feedback. What, what do you think about that well, idea? Actually, I am very happy that he's going to, on the picket line. Like I've told people many times, uh, Biden, I didn't think was going to be anywhere close to uh, good news for progressives, as it turns out. While we, uh, those of us that are progressives, didn't get all that we wanted, we got a hell of a lot more from Biden than we could have ever dreamed of. So uh, given that Biden is what we have. Biden is what I support. Now, when he goes out there on the picket line and does that, he earns my love. He earns my love because he's going out there and saying, I'm working for the people. Now, if, if you started the program today, the article that I was working off of was from Robert Reich, who said, great, President Biden. I love that you're out there going to the picket line, but we need you to do more. We need you to call out all these folks that are in fact causing the problem. So I'm with you, Peter. I'm with brother Biden for doing this and we want him to do more. If people see that those, the politicians that are going to do more and they see that it's going to help make their lives, not only economically, but socially better, you know, uh, things will get better, but we got to get that name in. Thank you so kindly for calling brother Peter. Oh, well, and, uh, I could yeah. just, yeah, just uh, so I would like to be able to sort of connect the dots too. Like if we have the same calling people out, if I'm a representative, I'm trying to represent our congressional district too up in the U.S. House. But what I would do, the same thing like you're saying, connect the dots, like call out um, like there are leaders here in Texas. Like uh, so if I'm up there in Congress, that's one of the things that I would love to be accomplishing is to speak out against this. A lot of the injustices that are happening here in Texas, like uh, so that's just one kind of follow up. So, you know, calling these people out like, you know, Governor Abbott and, uh, Pat, you know, Patrick, these guys, Dan Patrick. So let me just say, like, you're absolutely here. right. And, and let me take, let me go off of your cue. Uh, Governor Patrick, uh, Governor, uh, uh, Governor Abbott and uh, Lieutenant but, Governor Patrick and the entire Republican cabal in Austin should be called out. They're causing the deaths of uh, hundreds of uh, Texans by denying them uh, the Medicaid expansion to the Affordable Care Act. Uh, anywhere else, uh, whenever somebody knowingly causes a death of another, it's called murder. So I call those in Austin murderers. Thank you so kindly for calling, Peter. And let's go ahead and go to Brother Donald. Come on in, Donald. Donald, you're on the air. Good morning, Alberto. How are you today? I am doing fine, sir. Talk to me. Okay, you let them put you in the box, and I'm going to explain how. Are you ready? Okay. Yes, sir. If if you have three buckets, you have a red bucket on the right, a, mm -hmm. a blue bucket on the left, and a white bucket in the middle. That would be in the middle, people. Mm -hmm. If you put the crabs in the bucket, it doesn't matter which bucket they go into. They're all trying to get out. But right. what you're on is a clear bucket that's on top of them because you're not far left. You are in the middle because you can get the left and the right to agree with you. So don't ever let them push you to the far left and that put you in that box. You are in a clear bucket elevated above them because the crabs can actually see what you're doing. And then they realize you're eating a salad and you're not going to put them in the pot to boil them. Oh, man, I like the way you put things, man. You're, 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 I mean, I'm going to be careful. I may call you a poet, man. Stop it. I may call you a poet, Donald. <laughs> Oh, that's it. That's all I got to say. The clear bucket lets the crab know what's going on. You're not putting I, them in a red bucket. You're not putting them in a blue and you're not putting them in a white. In other but words, we're here to tell the truth. Red. We're here to tell the truth. And I, you know, I kind I kind of like that. I just want, we just want what's right for all of us. So you got that right, brother. I, I, I like that. I like that. Anyway, thank you so kindly for calling in, uh, right. my you brother. Know. You have a wonderful rest Bye -bye. of your day. Paul Fleming says the uranium industry continues to poison the U.S. groundwater. ProPublica catalog cleanup efforts at the 50 plus sites where uranium was processed to fuel the nation's nuclear arsenal. Even after regulators say cleanup is complete, polluted water and sickness are often left behind. No surprise. And I can bet we can tell you who's the accomplice of that. Uh, Ray says. The irony of this economy is that just to uh, it just took some corporate welfare is an accepted standards because they're always getting subsidized when they lose money. So they are incentivized to take higher risk. Let me let me qualify that a bit. I, I, re, I need to qualify that because a lot of people don't quite understand that. And I want to use the pharmaceutical industry as an example. Uh, the pharmaceutical industry likes to say that their prices are high because they take risks. 
the reality is they don't take much risk when you when you spread it out. Here's what happens. Let's say they take drug number one and drug number one fails. And they 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 create drug number two. They don't create it. They they steal it from a university or whatever, and they get drug number two. And drug number two is immensely successful. They charge very high prices for the drugs, etc., etc., etc. Guess what they do? That drug that they lost money on before they pay a penny in taxes from the profit from drug number two, they write off all the losses and, you know, they're going to tag on as much losses as they can to that drug that failed. They tag on all the losses on that drugs before they pay a penny in taxes. But guess what's included in that drug that lost money? All the marketing that they did for that drug, all the people that they paid off for that drug, all the executives that made money as that drug was coming to fruition. So don't ever buy into uh, companies, um, corporations that claim they lose money. All of it is written off before they pay a penny in taxes. So you always end up, the taxpayer always ends up subsidizing the corporations. The lies that they tell because we don't, they don't give us the option to critically think, it's immense. Folks, they never lose. Even when they are balanced, when their, their profit and loss seem to say they're losing money, they're not. Come on in, Moses. Good morning, my brother. Good morning, my sister. How are you doing? All right, fine. I'm just there to say quickly that there is too much criticism of Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. If you give somebody, you give somebody give you to do a job and they give you broken tool, how can you do a good job? We need to stand up behind Joe Biden, give him the strength to know we are behind him. And in most things, the people who are supposed to know better are the ones who are saying Joe Biden than this, Joe Biden than that. Well, you know, if we don't support him in most of the bills, and, or sometimes it's our own um, Democrats, who are turning when they should say, let us unite and let us push this. What is happening in Texas there? Who is supporting him? Who is saying where he is weak? Let us give him the strength. Let us reunite all our resources and stand up with the president. He's doing the best that he can. But at every push, there is, like you said, there's a crab trying to pull him down. You know, at this time, I think all people who understand, you know, the health of, of, of society should stand up with Joe Biden because the alternative is our destruction. Take a look at what's happening in Texas and throughout the, you know, the, 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 what is, I don't call it right wing. To me, this is not right wing because the right wing, everything is upside down. We call right, we call left, right, and we call right, left. You know, the people that are doing the right, we call them left. The people that are doing the wrong, we call them right. <laughs> and, and, yeah, and it is becoming obvious that there are two sides, the righteous and the wicked. And each of them has their designation. If you are putting barrel drums inside of the water to, 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 to hurt people, who are you? Are you? Is that right or is that left? That and is if wrong. Doing yeah. that you, can, you can to take away the voting rights, to hurt um, school children, teachers, doctors. Are you right or are you left? What are you doing? And those who are doing their best to ameliorate the pain of the people, we call them left. So everything is upside down in this place. And if we are not careful, what it is the same, the, 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 what we call the right, are playing the same playbook that Hitler played and all dictators played when they went to overcome the people. And finally, when people realize it's too late, 
And then you say, we should have known. We saw it coming, but we didn't do nothing. When they came for the Jew, I said, I'm not a Jew. I didn't do nothing. When they came from the, for, for, for the Haitian, I said, I don't speak French, so I didn't do nothing. And finally, they, they asked my door, and I don't know what to do. There's nobody there to help. America has to be careful. The people they call the right are pushing for this old dictatorship. We have seen this before in the Second World War. That's why they don't want education. They don't want the children to learn so that they can see what is coming ahead of them and they can, they can stand up. So we need to stop pointing fingers at Joe Biden and decide what it will be. Moses, let me just tell you that uh, there are two pieces that I had to play today. One by Miles Taylor, uh, who was President uh, uh, Trump's uh, Homeland Security uh, chief, and uh, Amanda Carpenter, who is a, a, a conservative editor. I was going to play these two pieces, but in, because people called to chat, I, I hadn't. Uh, but two of these guys, uh, uh, my, I interviewed Miles Taylor before the the. Uh, Trump's Homeland Security guy, and they point out exactly some of the stuff that you're saying that I think people need to listen to. So please go to politicsandright.com slash newsletter, politicsandright.com slash newsletter, and watch those videos that I did with Miles Taylor and Amanda Carpenter, because they, they kind of uh, illustrate some of what you said about what happens if this guy were somehow magically get reelected. Moses, thank you so kindly, as usual, for calling in, my friend. All right, let's go to the control room for a final word from Brother Howard Reynolds and Jack Van Bibber. Well, a very interesting show today, Egberto. You covered a whole lot of stuff and uh, a, lot of, a lot of guests today, a lot of guest callers. We appreciate your call-ins to this show, 713-526-5738. And while you're doing that, you might as well make a donation to keep Egberto on the air, which would be very beneficial to you. How about you, Jack? What you got? All right. I was just saying, uh, Donald, you are a political chef. <laughs> I love the I love the that the the choice of words. Anyway, folks, uh thanks. Thank you, both Howard and Jack, for the great work in the control room. My thank you, callers. You guys are wonderful. Thank you, listeners. You guys are the best. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics and Right, and you guys know how I end this baby. I am what? Out! We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join. <laughs> <laughs>